Hello, my name is Mina Satari and I would like to talk to you about the effects of plastics on human health and development. Plastic. It's everywhere. Most people couldn't last a day without using something plastic. It has an endless amount of uses. You can do anything with plastic. But what is plastic doing to you? Do you even know what chemicals plastics contain? Do you know how they can affect you? If you're like most people, you probably go about your day using plastics without thinking about these questions. You wake up and brush your teeth with a plastic toothbrush, walk to class drinking out of your plastic water bottle, and eat your lunch out of plastic food containers. You may be asking, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with plastics? And that's what I'm here to tell you. One group of major endocrine disruptors found in plastics are phthalates. Phthalates are a group of chemicals used to make plastics more flexible and harder to break. They are often called plasticizers, and some phthalates are used in, as solvents for other materials. More than 18 billion pounds of phthalates are produced worldwide in a year. They are found in everything but the most worrisome are the things people apply directly to their bodies. Phthalates are in cosmetics, perfumes, food packaging, pharmaceuticals, blood bags and medical tubing, pesticides, wood finishes, insect repellents, lubricants, the list goes on and on and on. Studies have shown that they are hormone disruptors, and the CDC says, that human health effects from exposure to low levels of phthalates are unknown. They say some type of phthalates have affected the reproductive systems of laboratory animals, but more research is needed to assess the human health effects of exposure to phthalates. Based on this information from the CDC, the FDA has determined that there wasn't a sound scientific basis to support taking regulatory action against cosmetics containing phthalates. But other research shows that higher levels of phthalates have been connected to girls having premature breast development, which can be a future indicator of breast cancer. These hormone disruptions can also be tied to a rise in hypospadias, a deformity of the urethra in boys. During pregnancy, if a woman has high phthalate exposure, she is more likely to have a boy with general abnormalities such as undescended testicles or smaller penises. There isn't much you can do to avoid these phthalates, though. Cosmetics are required to list ingredients of the products, so you can make sure you read these ingredients before you buy. But the catch is that fragrances and professionally used products don't need to list ingredients. So the best way to avoid phthalates and their ill effects are to use natural products. Bisphenol A, or BPA, is the most commonly known harmful chemical used in making plastics. First synthesized in 1891, BPA came into use as a synthetic estrogen in the 1930s. Later, chemists discovered that combined with phosgene, a toxic gas used in World War I, and other compounds, BPA yielded the clear, shatter-resistant polycarbonate plastic that is used in so many items that we use on a daily basis. It has been used to harden polycarbonate plastics and make epoxy resin for about 70 years now. BPA is a xenoestrogen. It mimics estrogen and can cause many different problems for human health. It can be found in baby bottles, sippy cups, reusable water bottles, sports drink and juice bottles, microwave dishes, food storage containers, and so much more. It is also used in the plastic resins that line nearly all food and soft drink cans. Low doses of xenoestrogens, like BPA, have been linked to breast and uterine cancer in women and early onset puberty in girls, as well as decreased testosterone in men that leads to increased rates of prostate cancer. BPA has also been linked to the contribution of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and obesity in both genders. Scientists have found that
that BPA can be tied to asthma, heart disease, cancer, infertility, genital deformity, low sperm count, liver problems, and ADHD. The worst thing about this is BPA is in so many objects that are catered for infants and children, like bottles, sippy cups, and toys. In early childhood, too much estrogen can change brain and organ development, as well as increase the risk of breast cancer. Children and infants have the highest daily intake of BPA. They have a low body weight and tend to chew on plastic items. On top of that, they do not have the developed detoxification pathways, so their bodies are less able to flush the BPA from their systems. In 2007, Patricia Hunt exposed pregnant mice to BPA, just as the ovaries in their developing female fetuses were producing a lifetime supply of eggs. When the exposed fetuses became adults, 40% of their eggs were corrupted, which spelled trouble for their offspring. BPA's effects, it seemed, were not confined to the mouse receiving the dose, with that one exposure, Hunt says, were actually affecting three generations simultaneously. This same effect can happen with humans. So how are you being exposed? The CDC has determined that the primary source of public exposure is through drinking water and eating foods stored in containers with BPA. But how much of it actually gets into our bodies? The 2003-2004 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey that was conducted by the CDC showed that 93% of 2,517 participants ages 6 and older had BPA present in their urine. The FDA claims that BPA is safe at low levels, and they have set the safe daily exposure to 50 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. But research has shown that low doses over a long period of time build up in our bodies. Many items containing BPA have been taken off the market and replaced with BPA-free versions. However, when 18 BPA-free sippy cups were tested, more than a quarter of them were positive for estrogenic activity. These items no longer contain BPA, but they still have the same harmful effects from estrogen. The amount of BPA that leaks into food and water is really dependent on the temperature of the container and the food inside the container, as well as the abrasiveness or acidity of cleansers used on the container. So what is being done about this? Well, in January of 2010, the FDA started supporting changes in the linings of food cans and encouraging manufacturers to find better and safer alternatives for BPA. Really, it is all up to the individual. You have to be conscious of your purchases and be aware of things that you are eating and drinking out of. Avoid using plastic items when there are other alternatives, like glass or metal or anything. And reduce your use of canned foods and even soda cans. As a rule of thumb, never microwave containers labeled with recycling codes 3 or 7 because they are more likely to contain BPA. In general, as a society, we need to take away our dependence on plastics because there are so many chemicals in plastics that we don't know the effects of. That is all and thank you for your time.